in our last video, we looked at some results from the laws of indices. All right. Now let's look at no. I mean um, in those in those results, we we use the second law, which is x to the a divided by x to the b is equal to x to the a minus b. Let us see some results from the third law now. We're going to use indices that are fractions. Basically, let's look first at x to the half. What is x to the half? Hmm, interesting. All right. We know that if we have 2 to the 2, to the two, 2 squared is 4, right? Now, suppose we want 4 to the half. What does that give us? All right, let's look at the third law and see if we can fix up this thing. We, 4 to the half is really 2 squared to the half, right? Now let me write it here. 4 to the half is really 2 squared to the half. All right? No. 2 squared, 2 to the 2, to the half. Based on the third law of indices. X to the A, that, all of that to the B is X to the A times B. So 2 to the 2, all of that to the half is 2 to the 2 times half. 2 times half is what? Is 1. So it's 2 to the 1. And we saw from our previous video that 2 to the 1. Is equal to 2. Alright? No, here. 2 to the 1 equals 2. But here. What we see. We, what we're finding out. Is that this 2 squared is 4. So 4 is what we're raising to the power of a half. And we see that is 2. So 4 to the half is 2. So 4 to the half is e Let me rewrite that. 4 to the half equals 2. Alright? Let's try another number. No? We're just going to try a few of them. And see if we can see some pattern. Suppose we have 3 squared. We get 9. Suppose we try 9 to the half. What would we get? Alright. 9 to the half. Means 3 squared to the half. Alright. Because 3 squared is 9. And based on the third law of indices. This is 3 to the 2 times half. 2 times half is 1. So it's 3 to the 1. Which is 3. Make sure you're following it up. Now, basically, this is saying that 9 to the half is 3. So we can write it down here. We'll make some space. And write 9 to the power of a half is equal to 3. Let's try again. With another number. Suppose we try to find out what is 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, right? So we want to find out what is 16 to the half. 16 to the power of a half means 4 squared to the power of a half, right? And according to the third law of indices, this is equal to 4 to the, multiply the powers 2 times half, we multiply the indices 2 times half. So 2 to the, no, 4 to the 2 times half means 4 to the 1 because 2 times half is 1, which is 4. So therefore, this 4 squared to the half is 16 to the half. 16 to the half is equal to 4. So 16 raised to the power of a half is equal to 4.
right? No, you see some type of pattern here. It seems as if what is it saying? Is that four to the half is two, and two is the square root of four. Nine to the half is three, and three is the square root of nine. Sixteen to the half is four, but four is the square root of sixteen. Right? So this pattern is saying that x to the half is the square root of x. Right? Which is true. And we can try it with the calculator too. Right? Let's try with the calculator and see what happens. We have 16 to the power of half. 16 to the power of 0.5 equal 4. Let's try 25. 25 to the power of 0.5 equal the square root of 5. 4 to the power of a half is 2, which is the square root of 2. 9 to the power of a half equals 3, square root of 9. Right? 16 to the power of, and if you want to write the half as 1 over 2, no problem. 16 to the power of a half equals 4, which is the square root of 16. 25 to the power of a half equals 5, which is the square root of 5. Right? 36 to the power of a half equals 6, which is the square root of 36, and so on and so forth. So, when you have a number raised to the half, it's the same as the square root of the number. Right? The square root of the number. Um, let's try a thing. So, here. Suppose we have... I don't think we when you use this in what we're going to do. Suppose we have two raised to the power of three. Same as two by two by two, right? We got to two, two, four, four, two is eight. Now we want to find two to the power of one third. Right? I mean eight to the power of one third. We want to find 8 to the power of 1 third. 8 to the power of 1 third is the same as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 1 third. Right? Now, if you have 2 to the 3 and all of that to the 1 third, it's going to be 2 to the 3 times 1 third based on the third law of indices, which is 2 to the 3 times 1 third is 1, which is 2. So, therefore, 8 to the 1 third is equal to 2. Now, the cube root of a number is a certain number. If you have three of them and you multiply them, you get back that number. And if you have three twos lined up and multiply, you get 8. So 2 is the cube root of 8. 2 is equal to the cube root of 8. Now, I promise you, if you try it with any other number, you're going to see that when you have that number to the power of one third is equal to the q root of that number. So a number to the power of one third means the q root of that number. And I also promise you that if you have a number to the quarter, you can try it, right? Just like how we did. These we could try. A number raised to the power of a quarter will be the fourth root of that number. Right? So generally, generally what you have is a number raised to the power of 1 over n, whatever n is, is equal to the nth root of that number. So x x to the power of n is going to be the nth root of x. 
right? So you have that x to the power of n, whatever n is, whatever x is, I mean x to the power of 1 over n, I should say, x to the power of 1 over n is equal to the nth root of x. So, ensure you understand that. All right. Now, here, what you basically have is that 1 over n, the nth root of x. Now, we're going to look at this thing some more in our next video.